Hi, this is Nicole Steele of thejoyfulstamper.com, and today, let me adjust my area here, and today I want to welcome you. Uh, I wanted to show you how to make this card using this background with a blender pen. One of my very, very favorite techniques is to use a blender pen to pull in the color from a stamped image on a scrapbook page or um, a card base. And it's such an easy technique and it adds just a nice, subtle, soft, blurred look to a project that I really, really like. So this is what I'm gonna show you today. And I have all the pieces cut. We are starting with a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of pool party cardstock and I've scored it down the middle at five and a half inches. And this is what we're going to make our background with. So I'm using the Painted Poppy stamp set found in Stampin' Up's 2020 mini catalog. And I'm going to use the large poppy to create my background. Stick that on a stamp. And I'm going to use the Poppy Parade ink to stamp it. And there is no pattern to what I'm doing. I'm just going to ink it up. And I'm going to stamp randomly all over the card. Now, if you can see my original card, you'll see the center of it is covered by these panels. So I don't need to worry about stamping the center of my card. I can just go around the edges there. There's no point in doing any more work to this card and then we need to, especially if it's going to be covered. So I'm just gonna go around the card randomly. And then I'll set that aside. Then I will take this blender pen. Stampin' Up! sells these in packages of three. And I believe they're $11. And they're found in our annual catalog. And they have tips on both ends. It doesn't matter which end you use. They're both the same. And you'll notice that from use, the tips get discolored. That's okay. As long as the liquid comes out clear, you're good to go. So what I do is I take the tip of this and I just quickly start swirling around in circles. And that's going to pull that color out from the stamped images there. And you want to be careful that you don't overwork the cardstock because if you go over it over and over again with your blender pen, the paper will start to pill, you know, come off in like little little balls, little pieces of fuzz, kind of like a sweater would. So I'm working fast. I'm not worried about being perfect. Making cards is not about being perfect. It's about having fun, trying new things, doing different things. And most of the ink is found in the center of this image, so that's why I'm starting in the center. That causes my blender pen to grab more of that color and pull it out. And you just go all the way around. Now what you can also do with a blender pen if you want to is you can actually touch it to your ink pad to pick up the ink color that way. And you can color your image in that manner. I have tried that before. <laughs> and it takes... Well, for me, it takes a lot of practice to get it because then I end up with streak lines and I've never, I don't know, I've just never been able to master that technique. So that's why I hit upon this one and I absolutely love it. It doesn't, I don't have to worry about did I put too much color on my ink or on my blender pen tip or not because all I'm doing is using the ink that is already laid down when I stamped my image. Now one look, one way of, um, I like to use this technique that I especially love is when I make a scrapbook page and I stamp a title, I love to take my blender pen and go over that stamped title and just very, very softly blur the letters. And I just, I love the little soft halo it gives to, it gives it, um, it adds like this little vintage look that I absolutely love. All right, we have one more flower to go. And again, I'm just pulling from the center where most of that ink is, going in quick circles, 
not worrying about it being perfect. Okay, and when you're done coloring, all you have to do to clean your blender pen is to take it and scribble it on the paper until it runs out clear and then it's ready to use for your next project. You do not have to devote a blender pen to each color family. So you don't need one for reds, one for yellows, one for greens. You can use one blender pen for all the different colors. Just make sure to scribble on your scratch paper in between so that you can get that extra ink off before moving on to the next color. So we have our background there and I have a piece of Poppy Parade cardstock and a piece of Peaceful Poppies designer series paper. There's patterns on both sides, but I'm going to use this one. This pattern is my favorite in the whole pack. And if you want to see the other patterns in that package, just go to page 25 of Stampin' Up's mini catalog and you'll see all the 12 by 12 patterns that are in that designer series paper package. If you need a catalog, be sure to email me at Nicole at thejoyfulstamper.com and I'll send you a catalog at no charge. I'll put the celebration one in there too for you. And I'm going to use Tombow liquid glue to glue these pieces together. A little goes a long way with this liquid glue. I don't want it oozing out the sides of my paper. So I apply just a little bit. Lay that onto the Poppy Parade cardstock. And I'm going to have all the dimensions in the description to this video. So there's no need to worry about writing it down right now as you're watching. And before I adhere this to my card, I'm going to take some of this crinkled seam binding ribbon and I'm going to wrap it a few times around this piece here. Now, unless I'm designing for a class, I leave my ribbon on the spool when I'm using it. I find that it minimizes waste. I'm going to wrap it around twice. And I don't have to worry about uh, measuring too long or too short when I leave it on the spool and tie, or tie it from the spool this way. And that way I cut off exactly what I need. I mean, when you're working with really, really pretty ribbon like this, you don't want to waste any of it. So I have that wrapped on there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and adjust it because I know I'm going to have some elements over here that I don't want in the way of this bow. Okay, and then I'm going to use, again, multi-purpose liquid adhesive to adhere that to my card base. And I'm just going to run some thin lines down the edges and in the center. I do not recommend covering your cardstock with this liquid glue. When you go to press it down onto your card, it's going to ooze out the sides and dried glue seeping out the edges is not the look that we want for our cards. Okay, now I'm going to take, uh, let's see what's next here. Oh, my pieces, okay. So if you'll notice in this card, I stamped the large poppy flower, the same one I used for the background. I stamped it in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I stamped these two smaller flowers in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Then I took this stamp here, inked it up with Poppy Parade, and I stamped it over top of those two flowers to give it some color without actually using a coloring tool. And then I used the splatter stamp also with Poppy Parade ink to add some splatters onto it. Then I die cut them out with the painted labels dies that coordinate with this. This leaf also comes from this suite of products and that was an old olive ink also die cut with the painted labels. Now in the interest of time, I went ahead and stamped and die cut those out already. So I have all my pieces here in this bag. This circle comes from the Peaceful Poppies Elements pack. And you'll see it right here on this page. It has ve embossed vellum sheets, it has colored uh, die cuts, it has a watercolor sheet of embossed die cuts, and it also has these basic black ones too. I did a Facebook Live this past Tuesday, January 14th, where I showed you five ways to use these Peaceful Poppies Elements packs. So go ahead, I have that uploaded to YouTube or it's on my Joyful Stamper Facebook page. You can go back and watch that if you want more ideas for how to use these Elements pack. They're $6.50. I thought they were a fantastic deal for all the different ways that you could use them. Now I'm going to adhere my Poppies pieces with some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm just going to put one on each. I think that's plenty to hold these, this card in place. For this leaf here, though, I am going to use a mini Stampin' Dimensional. 
It's a little bit smaller than the regular sized one and so I don't have to worry about it hanging over the edge. I'm going to glue my Peaceful Poppies Elements piece down with liquid glue. And I'll stick it right down. Um, I'm gonna move my ribbon up a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna stick that down right in the corner there. Okay. All right, now we're going to layer everything. So I'm gonna peel the backings off of the Stampin' Dimensionals. What I like about the Stampin' and Dimensionals is it adds some lift to my pieces, and so I can tuck and layer things, which is my absolute favorite thing to do with cards. The more layers, the better. I'm gonna start with my large poppy, and I'm gonna tuck in this little one. Now, with the Stampin' Dimensionals, you can gently lift them to reposition them if they're not quite where you want them to be. It's okay to do that. Nothing's really permanent. Um, just be gentle and careful when you lift it up and you should ha shouldn't have a problem repositioning things. So I've got those pieces in place. Now the last thing I have to do for this card is stamp my sentiment. And I'm going to use Happy Birthday from this free celebration set here called Sending You Thoughts. This is my absolute favorite set in this 2020 celebration catalog because I find it to be the most versatile in this whole brochure. There's happy birthday, there's congratulations, there's thank you, there's get better. Um, and so that covers so many occasions and those are the cards that I send out by far the most. So I definitely recommend if you're going to place a $50 order to choose sending you thoughts as your um, celebration free item. I've gotten so much use from that set. So I'm going to stamp happy birthday on a piece of basic black cardstock and I'm going to use my Versamark ink pad because I'm going to do some heat embossing on there. Now before I heat emboss, in order to avoid having stray flecks of embossing powder everywhere, I'm going to use this embossing buddy to take away the static on my cardstock and I just need to rub it over there. And then I can go ahead and ink up happy birthday with Versamark. Versamark, if you're new to stamping, is a clear, sticky ink that takes a little bit of more time to dry. Now, why would we want to use an ink that takes a lot longer to dry? Well, when you're heat embossing, you need time to add the embossing powder. And if the ink were to dry really quick, you wouldn't have time to add this embossing powder. So we need the Versamark to dry slowly. So that ink is still sticky. This is white Stampin' Emboss and Powder. It comes in a little jar, but I bought several jars and dumped them into this Ziploc container because it makes it a lot easier to sprinkle on the powder and just tap it right back into the container. No mess. Now what I'm going to do is warm up my heat gun. So you're gonna hear it. It's gonna get loud for a second. I need to give it a few seconds to get hot enough to melt this embossing powder here. Now, right now, it's a little grainy and bumpy, but when we heat it with our heat tool, it's going to get smooth. It's going to melt and it's going to get shiny. So here we go. This is the technique that first attracted me to stamping. I thought this was magic, and you're going to hear me say that over and over because it never fails to make me fall in love with stamping every time I do that. There you go. It's smooth, it's shiny. All right, I just love that look of white embossing powder on basic black cardstock. Now I'm gonna take a paper, pair of paper snips and I'm actually gonna cut all the way around that, trimming it very, very closely, just following the outline of the letters. And again, you do not have to worry about perfection. We're making a card. This is handmade. This is meant to reflect you. And I don't think any of us are perfect. In fact, I know none of us are perfect. Therefore, nothing we make is going to be perfect either, but it is gonna come from the heart and it's gonna reflect us. And it's gonna reflect the care and love that we have for the person that we're sending this project to. So don't sweat the small stuff with this. Just have fun with it. There, see, I just went around it. And when you're cutting with your paper snips, the best tip I can give you is to turn the paper, not your scissors. And these scissors, they're small and they're sharp all the way to the point. So it's easy to trim around tight corners and to get into tight places like that. 
So we have that. And now I'm going to use, again, the multi-purpose liquid glue to add that to my card front right on top of that large poppy there. Okay, just like that. And there you go. There's our card. There's the blender pen background technique. I hope you enjoyed that. I put this up in a blog post on Thursday, or excuse me, on Wednesday, January 15th. So I have some close-up pictures there at thejoyfulstamper.com if you want to see it. Um, I'm also going to put the measurements for this card in the description to this video underneath. So be sure to check it out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook. Anyway, I would love to connect with you because I really, really enjoy stamping. And if you need a Stampin' Up! catalog, be sure to email me at Nicole at thejoyfulstamper.com. I will send a free catalog package out to you ASAP. Thanks and have a good day, friends.